So the company, the 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 what is this company called? Uh, Cyberdyne Systems. Cyberdyne Systems. They find the T one hundred and one in the previous movie. You've told me on many occasions about how you crushed one in a hydraulic press. If I had, there would have been some evidence. They would have found something at the factory. So you don't believe anymore that the company covered it up? No, why would they? So if, so if I remember correctly, in Terminator 1, they, at the end of the movie, they end up at some sort of machine shop factory, sort of a random place mm-hmm. somewhere in Los Angeles, I think. And somehow... With the company had no idea that they were going to get attacked by a robot from the future, but they were like on it. They like called Cyberdyne and they're like, "Hey, get over here immediately! We found a thing." And Cyberdyne's like, "We're on it!" And they go over there. They clean the place out before the cops show up, and the whole thing is it's covered up. Like, how in the world did they coordinate that? Interesting. I don't. I don't know. So I filled in blanks. I don't know how it actually happened in the film. I filled in blanks. I figured that the police found it and they're like, "What is this thing?" And so then they like tried to tech trasher or to put in evidence and then when cyberdyne found out about it i don't know how they found out about it when they found out about it then they started paying off people and like like you don't talk about this ever we're like relocate your family to like a nice place and like and like control all the information that's that's how i feel yeah about it. yeah but because cyberdyne feels like a kind of like a tech startup mm-hmm. but they have like the power of like that's a right. huge corporation which right. they wouldn't have until they've got the tech and they've developed it you know, so it's like, it okay. feels like there's some okay. shenanigans going on there that we don't understand. <laughs> That's right. So I'm like, okay, okay. So so either it's like political stuff, there's Cyberdyne, maybe Cyberdyne's like president's uncle is like a senator or something. So he's got like, like out, like way too much power. Or maybe Cyberdyne ha- is like, they make a time traveling machine themselves in the future and then they send someone back to like clean up the scene, make sure nobody sees it. Right, That's like a double loop. Oh my gosh. Double loop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean right. yeah because it's such an effective cover-up because it's quite the evidence with the machine is right there with the chip and the robot it's all right there and you've got to like keep the police and medics Gosh, and yeah. murderers so, all quiet amazing amazing right and for it to be like completely deleted from human knowledge like it didn't leak out at all like Cyberdyne was on top of it. They like, yeah. locked down the entire scene, locked down all the information. Which, now that we're saying it, makes me think that Cyberdyne is a tech... If Cyberdyne is truly a tech startup, then it was some larger corporation or maybe the government swooped Ooh. in. And then they gave the contract or whatever the responsibility to Cyberdyne. But they were, they couldn't have been the ones who were like, send the Cyberdyne trucks to the factory. Like, no way. Maybe it was a spinoff. Cyber, like, it was found from a big company and uh. then they spun off this small division. Could be, and that's and they spun it off because they wanted to keep it sort of secret and low key. Secret, small, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I buy okay. it. I buy it. Okay, so Sarah Connor, after ten years of of being on her mission, I mean, no one believes her. Mm-hmm. I know the date it happens. I'm sure it feels very real to you. It's gonna feel pretty fucking real to you too. Anybody not wearing two million sunblock is gonna have a real bad day. You're already dead, everybody. Two million sun, sun, two million sunblock. Why did she? Oh, because the nuclear. Uh, yeah, because yeah. so the robots, the machines launch nuclear attacks, and so the flash, mm-hmm. the 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 flash from the nuclear bombs. Okay, that's what she means by the sunblock. Mm-hmm. Slather that on. Yep. You're already dead, everybody. If you, you're dead already. This whole place, everything you see is gone. I know what happens. I mean, they're not dead already. They're, she's, right. she's talking to them. It's clearly false. Clearly false. She's sounding crazy. I feel much better now. I was looking forward to seeing my son. <sighs> Let's go back to what you were saying about those Terminator machines. You've told me on many occasions mm-hmm. about how you crushed one. And the psychologist the does not believe her. If I had, there would have been some I mean, evidence. I wouldn't believe her. I don't think you really believe what you're telling me today. A psychologist does not believe her, and so she's like she's playing the ruse to get out. And a psychologist doesn't believe her, but that's right. Like, why would anyone believe her to think that there are future robots that are going to destroy the human race? Right. Extra- what is it? Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So she's got extraordinary claims and basically zero evidence to back it up. Mm-hmm. So you cannot believe her. In addition, she's acting crazy. That's right. Climbing on tables and yelling at people. Telling them they're already dead. Like, like they're not, they're already yeah. dead. 
wear sunblock or you're going to (laughs) die. You know, so with those two things together, there's no way you'd believe somebody. Is there anything she could do to make herself believed? Would she even want to be believed? Is that even like, could you, without evidence, could, would you want to even try? Gosh, because anytime you, without evidence, anytime that you talk to somebody about your story, they're just gonna be like crazy. And then depending on where they, they line up in their like mental health, political plea, I don't know, they may turn you in. Mm-hmm. Right. And so like, right. you might want to keep this very close to your chest. Like keep That's keep right. keep the robot war a secret. Right. Keep it keep it internal. And a lot of stuff you could tell other people could get what you need without telling them about the robot wars. But that means you have to have you cannot talk to anyone. You have this right. you have this burden on you and you cannot talk to anyone. Which would drive you crazy. Would drive you crazy. Which you would end up here screaming at people. We we don't see it in the movie about why she's in there and why she's separated from her kid John, but that was my hunch. I had, my hunch was that she was taking him around, going to different places, learning different, teaching mm-hmm. him different skill sets, like how to work on cars, how to work yeah. on guns and stuff. And then somebody eventually was like, "Hey, this mom's not raising her kid right." Like, and then you get the cops called on you, you get child mm-hmm. protective services, and then you end up here. Mm-hmm. So, right. like, how do you how do you sneak around society, like doing what you need to teach your kid so that he can mm-hmm. lead the human army against the robots? But you got to do it like. Low key, super low key, super low key, and you got to be quite strategic and smart about how you do things. Oof, it's tough. Oof, oof. But yeah, we see that she's been in a psych ward for however many years, and that'll that'll do yeah. a number on your brain, even if you are yeah. right. 